mataas. No? I'm joking. So I'll, I'll only take uh, 30 minutes. No? So my discussion is on the value of artificial intelligence in addressing cybersecurity risks. So let's proceed. Uh, let's just skip this one. All right. So what is a typical day? You know? What is a typical scenario for cyber attacks you know, uh, that... Uh, uh, the, that organizations uh, experience no, for the for the past maybe past five years for the past year. So maybe you're familiar with distributed denial of service, wherein the attacker, no, uh, maybe to the use of artificial intelligence or automation, uh, attacks a single server. No, meaning uh, it is distributed in a way that. Uh, uh, a lot of computers targeting a specific server, maybe your website, your web application, your uh, school system, your hospital system, anything that is external facing. So the typical, you know, the typical statistics, uh, if you use uh, 2019 as the benchmark, so that's, uh, that's uh, uh, when you use 2019 as the 100%. So in the past, you know, uh, in the past uh, two quarters, so in Q3 2020, it almost doubled in Q3, and then it somewhat died down in Q4 you know, of 2020. Then the smart attacks, what are these smart attacks? Because initially, uh, distributed denial of service is just like having an attempt uh, to uh, disrupt your operation, uh, to take it down, but uh, they become smart you know, in terms of attacks, wherein the, the main objective is to what? Is to uh, uh, be able to be, become successful in your attack. So that's what smart attacks uh, uh, are called for. So if you use 2019 as the benchmark as 100%, it increased to 134% or 135% in 2020, Q3. Then uh, it finished around 120% in Q4. Then from a uh, from a fan base, no? uh, fan perspective, so the originating IPs or the source IPs are coming from consistently in our uh, nearby, no? in our neighbor, from our neighbor in China. So the, in Q3, that's around 71% of attacks are coming from China and 59% uh, uh, in Q4. The next is United States. I'm just concerned with these statistics because Russia is not, is not included in this particular statistics. So these are the threat actors. No? Attack actors coming from China, maybe because they are state sponsored, or some rogue uh, people in the US, and apparently Russia is not, is not uh, in this particular statistics. The next one is the brute force attack. So, aside from the DDoS, uh, the brute force is again the attacker uses an automated system because attackers are usually lazy, so they automate things no? uh, to try to attack a server using brute force attack, meaning uh, guessing a, a multiple combination of password uh, to be able to have access to your information assets. So from a, uh, from a fan base or from an uh, attack, uh, uh, attack source, uh, again, no, China as uh, somewhat consistent. So China is here. Then uh, US is on this side. So it increases. No? In US, it increases from uh, January 2020, then the latter part of April 2020, and the rest are of the same. No, uh, from Russia, uh, from Spain, Germany, France, and Russia is almost as if it's a, co a correlated type of attack. No, it's, it's the same. No, almost the same for the, the rest of the countries, except for US, which has a slight increase during the uh, April of 2020. The next one is a common. No? Uh, I don't know if you've heard the news about Colonial. Uh, it's a uh, 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 energy company in the U.S. They paid uh, five million no? uh, ransom uh, because they were affected by the ransomware. Uh, they were not able to operate for five days. So for them to operate within uh, after five days, they paid five million in bitcoins. So it's hard to trace. No? So a ransomware attack. So the common attack vector or the attack platform. Or attack uh, jump off point is what uh, multiple sources no one because right now people are remote uh, remote working or work from home so the uh, remote desktop protocol are compromised so these are the tools that 
uh, being used no, for remote connection. The second, uh, this one is the RDP, you compromise the remote desktop connection of the protocol. Then the next one is that email phishing, no? so tricking the user to click on something or clicking on a website or clicking on a file that will what uh, will trigger. So when you click a website, it will uh, uh, direct you to the website that is affected by a malware, which is a ransomware, or to a file that will be downloaded on your machine that is that will encrypt the file. So then we'll ask for ransom. And the third one is the software vulnerability. Uh, right now, no. Uh, we've been, uh, no, no, we've been supporting uh, one particular client uh, because they were victims of ransomware. No? So we've been uh, monitoring the incidents since Monday. So we're assisting them in the remediation. And the attackers are uh, constantly you know, trying you know, to infect other servers you know, at, this, at this point in time. Shodan, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Uh, uh, Shodan is a open source. No? Uh, it scans the the whole no the whole www uh, to assess if there are vulnerabilities no on your external facing asset so it does a short scan no, every second every minute and based on the scan no, uh, the most common no, CVEs what is common vulnerability numerators uh, talks about what are the common vulnerabilities identified uh, throughout the web. So a large, a large chunk, that's around 7 million, 7 million IPs, 7 million IP addresses or information assets are vulnerable to this particular uh, CVE number. Uh, we we'll say CVE 2017, so it was discovered in 2017, and then this is a serious number. So it's a, no, no, it's a open source tool that you can use, you can check even, or you can run a short and scan for all open uh, IP cams or web cams no, uh, globally. So you can even check no, uh, which web cams, IP cams are vulnerable are already been taken over and you can uh, tap on that no, to see what is, what's in that particular uh, web cam or IP cam. So just a short scan, no, it scans your, if you have no, external facing asset, so you might be, no, uh, you don't know, you might be what being scanned by through Shodan. All right, so what's the state of cybersecurity no, by ISACA in 2020? I think there's a newer version. Uh, the newer version will be released sometime next month. So based on the 2020, especially during the uh, initial no, during the initial phase of the pandemic, uh, there's a issue in terms of the state of hiring or retain, uh, retaining uh, people with, have, uh, with cybersecurity skills. So imagine with all of these attacks, no, this is a typical day no, for cyber attackers by the second, by the minute. And yet we have a problem in terms of cybersecurity globally, in terms of talent. And, and uh, based on the survey made, so I uh, participated in this survey, 92% uh, of the threat actors, no, uh, uh, or 92% of those that were surveyed said, uh, said that threat actors will increase cyber attacks no, in, in, uh, on targeting people or individuals, 87% uh, said that they will, because of the shift from work on site to work from home, it increases the data privacy and uh, security issues. Then 58% said threat actors will take advantage of the pandemic. So, so if you're posting that uh, everybody should be safe during this pandemic, the threat actors are maximizing or taking advantage of that. So don't expect them, no, don't expect mercy no, from these threat actors or attackers. And uh, the unfortunate fact, only 51% can say in confidence that they can, will be able to detect no, and respond to these cyber threats no, during the pandemic. So I'll explain that later on. And 62% said they are understaffed. No, their cybersecurity team is understaffed. Or 57 say, said they have unfulfilled cybersecurity positions on their team. They even said, a uh, large chunk of that, uh, even said that they don't have any, no, any cybersecurity plantilla or position in their company. And it will take them, 32% no, uh, said it will take them six months or more to be able to fill up a cybersecurity position uh, with a qualified candidate. 70% said there are fewer than half of the cybersecurity applicants that are well qualified. So there are applicants, but they are not qualified. 
course, seventy-two percent, no, of the cybersecurity profession, I believe that their HR, I don't know if there are from HR department here, uh, does not understand, no, what they need. No? So that's another problem. No? Supposedly, those that are uh, targeting or uh, looking for candidates uh, do not understand, no, uh, that the specific requirements. I've also been a victim of that. Uh, a lot of recruiter, no, sent me a message asking for this post. Then I told them, I think there's a gap or you do not understand the requirements. So I tell the recruiters. No? Uh, they even call themselves technical recruiter, but they do not really understand what uh, does the job entails. <clears throat> and based on the same survey, on the top three most important credentials or factors if the candidate is qualified. So 90%, 95% hands-on cybersecurity experience, 89% credential, and 80% or 81% hands-on training. Then uh, retention issues. So only 59% uh, were recruited by other companies. So they are what? Being poached, no? uh, maybe, maybe even to the competition. Or 50% limited promotion, or there's no incentive. No? Uh, and they are overworked no? during these times because they are now monitoring. No? Uh, a lot of activities because from my uh, imagine the impact if you're a 1,000 employee workforce uh, in the past no pre the pre pandemic you're just monitoring the corporate office because everybody's on site now maybe 800 of 10 or 80 percent of them are not right now are working from home so imagine no from one target you're now monitoring 801 so the one that is in the corporate and the 800 people that are working offsite. So imagine that uh, uh, the stress level of our, our cybersecurity professionals. Even 39% said lack of management support, and it's difficult to retain a cybersecurity talent within one year. No? So 66% of the respondents said that. Uh, skills gap, uh, lack of soft skills, the IT knowledge, uh, lacks, or, lacks of business insight, so do not understand the business lack cybersecurity technical experience and no hands-on training. And then only 20%, 27% uh, uh, said that university graduates are not prepared. No? Even in other countries, they already have university graduates in cybersecurity. And uh, it's only 27% of respondents said that they are well prepared. So how about the 80% or the 70%? And that's globally. And in the Philippines, it's only we only started late in terms of having a BS degree on cybersecurity. So we really lack the talent uh, in terms of cybersecurity skill set. 78% said that the demand for technical cybersecurity individual contributor roles will increase in the next 12 months. So imagine the expectation. And yet, this is the output, you know, this is the supply. And this is the demand. So imagine the disparity from a global level. So it's, I think it's uh, a little larger uh, in terms of percentage from a Philippine perspective. So what, who, well, what are the profiles of uh, cybersecurity defenders no, from a day-to-day -day perspective? So I don't know if uh, maybe you can raise your hand if you're this type of a cyber defender. So it's a one, is it a one-man team? So imagine, no, you're just one man team covering uh, 1,000 employees, 1,000 assets. No? Are you a two man team? No? Tandem, no, no? Baka mag BFF, no, tandem in terms of cybersecurity defense. Or is it a whole division? No? So if you have the money for it, no, maybe you can set up your own cybersecurity operations center. So do you have a one man team, a two man team, or a cyber uh, the whole division? wherein uh, you can protect no, uh, or monitor all uh, the activities no, against your assets. Or, uh, again, no, aside, it's not only a numbers game, but also talent. In this particular, I use this picture. Imagine if these are your cybersecurity defenders no, using paper and pencil. Is the pen mightier than the sword? So even though you have 100 workforce, if you don't have the tools, how can you defend no, against the cyber attackers no, uh, who are using AI, automation, artificial intelligence, the tools available in targeting your assets? So it will be hard no, to defend 
So imagine you're being uh, bringing a pen against a sword fight or a gun fight. No? So, so you rather be dead, no? you rather take suicide if that's the case. No? Okay, uh, other no other uh, typical uh, day of a defender. No? So imagine the attackers uh, has the whole no twenty four seven or through the automation can maximize twenty four seven no? for a month uh, just attacking you. No? And yet, you as the defender does a lot of things. No, uh, you add, uh, remove user accounts. So you're in charge. No, uh, for those, uh, you add accounts, you delete accounts. No, depending on those people that are being hired, onboarded, offboarded. Uh, updating system patches. So if you have multiple assets or so uh, var uh, various kinds, you need to update or you patch. So aside from adding accounts, you patch. You patch. Then there are project meetings. No. Now that the project meetings may last two hours, three hours in a day. So imagine, no, instead of spending that time uh, defending, you are attending project meetings no, that are maybe unproductive. Or uh, because of the needed skill set, you need to attend trainings no, while uh, attending project meetings, maybe while answering uh, concern on the user accounts. No, imagine multitasking. Then while doing all of this, you're fending cyber attacks manually then you're gonna review and analyze lags no? Vol uh, voluminous lags uh, again you need to sleep no? maybe during lunch time i don't know during uh, i don't know during office hours and you have to eat and then uh, it's only typical no? it's only typical in the philippine context that there's always other functions that may be asked by management that may be beyond or not included or not expected of a cybersecurity professional, and there's always this one line item that disrupts everything, no? that disrupts uh, your responsibility or your time for doing your core responsibility. Uh, because all of this, the attackers have what? No? Imagine, no? the attackers have eight hours, no? 24 7, no? 24 hours uh, through automation in, uh, attacking you, and yet you only have two hours, maybe one hour to pen attacks because you're so busy with a lot of things. So imagine, and then you lack, if you're a one-man team, imagine that. If you're a two-man team, or even though you're a division without the necessary tools, you are what? You are uh, useless or you are inefficient in terms of uh, defending these attacks. All right, uh, this is uh, the next The next few slides are the are the day no? in our lives, so in Exeture. So what is a typical cyber attack no? in, our, in our organization? So, do you have sleepless nights as a CISO, as an information security officer, because you don't know where are the attacks coming from, or the attacks are multi uh, are from multiple fronts that you need to defend, or do you like to sleep at night well? No? So, parang, uh, either being sleepless or sweet uh, sweet dreams. No? That's the two options that you have as a cybersecurity professionals. And this is an actual threat map. So this is our fan base no, in Exeture. As you can see, the higher the color in terms of red, more attacks. No? So we have fans from China. Yeah, no? So we have fan base in China attacking us from Russia, uh, Europe, uh, India. You know, uh, in, I think this is on the, uh, Indonesia. This one is Indonesia. Then America and North America. No? So imagine. No? So we have attackers from even Africa, no? So, ah, uh, no, is this Africa or this one? No? <laughs> uh, I need to learn, no? relearn my uh, geography, no? So these are the threat maps, no? Meaning the source IP attacking us, no? In our company. Uh, this is the threat report. So based on those detected, so there's around 68 or 69,000 uh, threats identified. So, so far so good, there are no critical uh, level in terms of attacks. So majority are medium, or majority or 80% are low level, and the rest are medium in terms of attacks. These are the geolocation of those attacks. So the United States is identified earlier in the map, and you have Russia and China. I think these are the top three, no? uh, our top three three fan base no china russia and uh, us no uh, always us claims that they are being attacked but they are also threat actors no they are also threat actors coming from the us 
So these are the threat actors, so the threat uh, locations uh, targeting us, no, as company, as a, as a company. So the specific threat report, yeah, these are the top 10 no, most frequent event types. So common, may brute force attacker targeting us. There's a uh, brute force attack no, through a secure shell. There's even a showdown scan, no, scanning us. There's even a, uh, uh, a compromised IP, meaning a blacklisted IP addresses of a host uh, known to be compromised is trying to scan, no, to scan our assets. Then I think there's another one. Uh, so there's another shadow server network scan and detected. No? So these are some of the attacks, no, uh, the common attack types that are targeting our our asset. So let's. Uh, these are some of the other threat uh, threat reports. No? So suspicious scanning. So may nag scan sa amin, no? Always scan. There's a backdoor login. Uh, there's a Cisco CVE uh, denial of service, so DOS. Then RDP scan detected. So nag end map, no? In end map kami, no? So na identify, no? Our network pin and blocking some uh, disclosure attempt. So these are some of the uh, threats. Okay. Uh, the next one, the example no, of threat. So I just remove the date and the destination IP because IP namin yan. These are the source IP. You know? So there's someone trying to put force attack us you know, to the secure shell. So it's blocked already by the tool. Uh, and even blacklisted compromised IP. Uh, these are, by the way, being automatically done. So we don't we don't do it manually. Uh, the tool uh, help us do do this, no? Because we are we're only a lean group in the company. So there's a list, no? Imagine there's a directory or a database of compromised IPs, no? Globally, that is blacklisted. So anything that uh, in when the tool identified that this IP address is part of the blacklisted IPs, it will auto automatically block no? or drop the, the connection. Even there's a showdown scan. So remember, showdown scan is a scanning by search engine for devices connected to the internet to check if there are vulnerabilities, no? what are those, uh, to do an inventory, what are those devices connected or external facing and identify their vulnerabilities. Okay, there's even a scanner no? attempt so they're, they're doing mass scanning on our on our IT assets. Then even a criminal IP network uh, scan detected and blocked. Right. So these are not being done no, manually. So we don't uh, review the logs and and click drop or click block. So it's automatically being done no, uh, by the tool installed in our in our network. So that's why uh, there's a really, you know, there's really a value in terms of AI, artificial intelligence. Because imagine you're only a one-man team, two-man team, or a team or division, uh, lacking the tool or just doing it manually cannot will not be able, no, Can, will not be able to block manually everything. No? Uh, there will be there's a li higher likelihood that there will be a successful attack. All right, uh, we use Inviser on uh, tool. No? Uh, we'll explain that later on. It's a cyber defense device with auto threat, no? auto threat detection and mitigation. Uh, because of the threat intelligence and in AI no? built in on that tool, it helped us no? somewhat be efficient. Uh, if it's already been known, a known attack, a known signature, it will uh, automatically block and drop. So it's a plug and play. So it does not, no? does not have uh, does not have an impact on your existing IT infrastructure. So it's uh, as, as if you're installing TV, you know? And uh, it's totally invisible when deployed. So it has cell, still cyber defense technology. So it has an, it's an also an inline device, uh, device that does not impact the internet bandwidth performance. So this is a typical setup. So we have our firewall. So external facing is the, uh, the, the advisor on. And it gets info from the threat commander. So what are the known no? uh, threats? What are the known? No? The cyber threat intelligence of the CTI is running 24-7. So it's up, uh, it gets update here. So it connects here. So to check, no, 
and whatever knowledge uh, they have on this will have will be on this tool so it can be efficient in terms of managing threats uh, that's the short version of it so, so three characteristic or mission factors so success factors of the tool so it's invisible ultra fast inline packet processing speed so it does not no does not have an impact on the internet bandwidth so bidirectional no dpi or deep packet inspection so it's capable of inspecting network on both sides no from incoming outgoing so it can uh, detect no uh, and it's automatically provided through the uh, as discussed earlier to the advisor on uh, cti or cyber threat intelligence okay i think that's my presentation so thank you very much